Hello friends, welcome to today's operating system class. In today's class, we will discuss uh, something about the operating system design and implementation. So, under this topic, we will discuss the design goals, mechanism and policies and implementation. And all these things will come under first unit, operating system overview and system structure. As we have already seen, the operating system that is operating system allows user program to interact with the system hardware ok. So, this is our hardware and this is our operating system and all the programs will be executed on the top of operating system ok. So, the operating system will provide a very good atmosphere to execute all the user programs and that can easily access the hardware. Okay, and the operating system will not provide any functionalities, but it will provide an atmosphere on which the user programs would be executed successfully. And all the operating system are having its own internal structure. All the operating systems are not having the same structure. Okay. For designing any operating system, we have to define the goals and specifications first. Here the design of system will be directly affected by the hardware that is the computer what we are going to use and the type of system. Type of system means here we are having so many different types of system. First one is batch processing system, time sharing system, single user system, multi user system, distributor system, real time system and general purpose system. So, these are uh, uh, different systems that is computers we are using and all these computers we have to use different operating system, different operating system because their purpose are different. Okay. So, commonly the requirements will be uh, divided into two basic groups, first one is user goals and system goals. Okay. User, whole go user goal means the person who is going to use this operating system. So, we have to collect the requirement of user and the system goals means the person who is going to design or create the operating system, design or create the operating system. So, based on the developer side what will be the goal and based on the user side what will be the goal, ok. We need to identify all these things. First let us see the user goals. From user point of view, the system should be that is the operating system should be convenient to use, easy to learn and use, reliable, safe and fast. So, these are the things expected by the user while using the operating system. And second let us see the system goals that is the developer side, the goals from developer side. Okay. The system should be easy to design and easy to create, implementation should be very easy and easily maintained. Apart from that, it should be flexible, reliable, error free and efficient. So, these are the items expected by the developer, the operating system developer. Okay. And for developing this operating system, this is a creative task which we have studied the software engineering subject. So, this semester you are having software engineering isn't it. So, in this subject you can study how to create, design, implement and uh, deploy the particular system. So, all those things will be applied for designing the operating system also. How do we collect the requirement of designing the operating system? Designing, designing the operating system. Here there is no unique solution for defining the requirement of operating system because we are having a wide range of systems, wide range of systems and all the systems will have different requirements and we are having large varieties of solutions also because all those things will run on different environment. See we are having different environment and different types of systems are also there. So, Accordingly, we need to collect the requirement. So, how do we collect the requirement? Collect the requirement based on user's demand. 
and what type of system they are going to use and under which environment they are go going to run their application. Accordingly, we need to design the operating system. Next, let us see the mechanisms and policies. Here, policy means what needs to be done and mechanism means how to do something. Okay, policy means what needs to be done. This is otherwise called as rules and regulation. And rules and regulation. Here, how we are going to implement these rules and regulation by using the machine. Machineries, okay. So, what is our policy here? Interrupt after every 100 seconds. Okay, we have to introduce the interrupt at the interval of 100 seconds. And how we are going to introduce this interrupt after every 100 seconds? So, we need to count the seconds, hence, we required a timer. So, timer is the mechanism, and interrupt after every second is policy. Okay, this is the paperwork. Policy is paperwork and this is machine work. Machine work. Here, we have to separate policy and mechanism. Okay, we should not combine the policy and mechanism into one single machine, but we have to separate policy and mechanism. Okay, because Policy will be changed time to time, okay, time to time the policy will be changed. If there is no separation, then if we change the policy, then accordingly we need to change the machine also, okay. Hence, what we have to do, we have to separate the policy and mechanism and we have to follow the general mechanism that would require very few changes even the policy changes occurred. That means, if there is any changes in policy that should not affect the mechanism, general mechanism. Okay. And next step is implementation. Okay. Once the operating system is designed, then we need to implement this OS because the operating system is collection of many programs and written by many peoples over long period of time. Okay, designing operating system is not a simple matter. Okay, so it is difficult to make a general statement about how they are implementing the operating system. Okay, the design is more number of people will work for long time to design an operating system. And next let us see the languages used to implement the operating system. In earlier days, the system was developed by using assembly language. Okay, for example, DOS operating system was used by assembly language and implemented in the processor 8088 initially and after that uh, they are using the high level languages like C and C++. That is the lowest level of kernel will be designed in assembly languages and all the other functionalities will be developed by using higher level languages. Okay, hence the operating system can be written in more than one language. Okay, higher level routine might be in C and the lower level systems will be designed by assembly languages. Here, the system programs will be designed by C or C++ and the scripting languages like Perl, Python or Shell script. Okay, apart from this, emulators are also used in the operating system to duplicate the functionalities for one system on another system. Okay, hence the operating system can run on non-native hardware also. That means the operating system designed for one system can be used in other hardware also. And the Unix operating system is written for all those languages, which languages? C, C++, uh, scripting languages, everything. And next let us see the advantage of using high level languages. If we use high level language, then we can easily write the code faster and more compact and easier to understand and debug. So, anyone can easily understand and debug this operating system. 
while developing and easier to port okay because portability means we can easily move from one system to another system okay if the operating system is written in high level languages apart from these the high level languages are having better data structures and algorithm so that it can easily develop when compared to the assembly language coding and if the operating system is very large even only small amount of code is critical to the high performance that means the interrupt handler io manager memory manager and cpu scheduler are probably most critical routines only these thing are very critical but even by using high level language we can easily handle all those critical routines the disadvantage of using high level languages are the first one is reduced to speed and second one is increased storage requirement up to this we have seen the operating system design and implementation so under this topic first we saw this design goals here we are having two design goals user goal and system goal after that we have seen the mechanisms and policies so we have to separate the mechanism and policy while designing the operating system so after designing we need to implement this operating system by using either uh, assembly language or high level language and then we have seen the advantages and disadvantages of using high level languages and in the next class we will see another important topic from first unit thank you